Hey guys, this is Staten, and today I would like to share with you a story about a man who, uh, apparently, uh, his name is not important, or at least the game makers didn't think it was, but it's about a man who is waiting for his wife to come home, and as he's waiting, he reminisces over things that he has a hard time remembering. Well, without revealing too much, I'll let you see for yourself. Sometimes, when I make a great effort, I can remember her scent, the sweetness of her breath. Serena. Serena, why can't I see you more clearly? Why can't I even remember? It was truly like an enchanted time, like we were in a magic circle where no sorrow or pain could touch us. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. The guy who snapped this, our host that night, used an actual film camera. It was a different world back then. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. The furniture came with the cabin. Considering how off the beaten path this place is, that helped make up our mind. Sometimes she would brush her leg against mine under the table when we were eating. A curious, sensual thrill. The table is worn but sturdy, just like our relationship was. Or is. We just don't know anymore. Our dining table quite modest, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The dining table was well worn even when we acquired the cabin. You could tell from its appearance that it had been the centerpiece of many happy occasions, and there were many more to come. I could tell plenty of stories about this table. To be honest, I'm surprised it's still in one piece. Sharing meals with a good red wine was one of the great pleasures in our relationship, especially in the intimacy of this cabin. I should probably eat. Can't remember the last time I ate, yet I don't feel hungry. I have more pressing things on my mind right now than culinary exploits. The stove looks like something from World War I. Considering how basic and ancient the kitchen is, it's a wonder what we manage to do with it from time to time. Well, she, mostly. Feeling peckish, dear? The stove looks like something from World War I. Considering how basic and ancient the kitchen is, it's a wonder what we manage to do with it from time to time. Well, she, mostly. So much wisdom and happiness in this bookcase. My life would have been much poorer without all this. The smell of old books is intoxicating. What happens to wood pulp as it ages gives it that distinctive vanilla smell. I loved it when we took down one of my favorites and curled up on the bed to read together. Is the wind howled outside on cold winter nights. Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here, too. A lot of rarities and special editions here. I didn't lend out my Necronomicon, did I? No, of course not. Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here, too. So many afternoons spent in this armchair. Come sit with me. I want to talk and cuddle. What did we talk about? Damn this fallible memory of mine. The most comfortable spot in the cabin. Well, along with the bed, of course. I can imagine her cuddling up to me even now, putting her hand under my shirt. Of course, we made love here, too. 
There was no place in the cabin we didn't before things deteriorated. The most comfortable spot in the cabin, well, along with the bed, of course. This window never got much attention. Then again, the view isn't nearly as spectacular. <laughs> Priorities, right? I guess it's covered with grease and grime from cooking, mostly. There's probably nothing out there that I want to see, anyway. All the stuff I care about is inside. Well, except for Serena. I can make out nothing through this window. There was a time, long ago, that all this disrepair felt oddly homey. All the windows are drafty, but like everything else, we just got used to it. We liked it, even. I can make out nothing through this window. No, I don't want to leave right now. There's still something for me in here. I better stay in, in case Serena comes back. There's always a chance she might return. There's nothing for me out there. This door has been creaking for years. One of the many things I promised I would fix. I have this gut feeling that I shouldn't leave just yet. There's nothing for me out there. Come, love, with peace in your heart, said Niav of the ice blue eyes. Hmm. Blue eyes. She made this with her own hands. She was really good. Look what I made, hun. in case we ever need to sweep something under the carpet. See the pattern of yellow squares? It's from this rug I remembered from my nursery. I must have been like three or four, but it always stuck with me. And no trap door under there, just more creaky floor. I always resisted the temptation to sweep things under there when it was my turn to tidy up. The rug's all crooked again. Can you help me straighten it out? And no trap door under there, just more creaky floor. Our refuge from the world, a place of warmth and passion. Sometimes we joked we needed to be so far out in the woods because that's how our sex life was, far out. The furniture came with the cabin, but the bedclothes we brought with us. A place like this needs some luxury, but with that, there are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. I feel too restless to sleep right now. I don't sleep well without Serena next to me. Both a blessing and a curse, I suppose. There are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. Quite a large armoire for our admittedly Spartan needs. She uses most of it. And we all have our skeletons in the closet. Not Serena. She was perfect. I'm not sure why, but I don't feel like opening it. The sole thought of it drains what little energy I have left in me. Maybe later. There's nothing of interest inside the closet anyway. I'm a casual dresser. No need to change clothes right now. Don't think Serena would approve of me making an even bigger mess of the clothes in here. Maybe later. There's nothing of interest inside the closet anyway. For some reason, light bulbs wouldn't last long in this lamp. I never looked into it. Two days, three days tops, and bam, a brand new light bulb would burn out. Whenever her lamp didn't work, Serena would come by my side to read. 
A few moments later, she would lay her head down on my chest and fall asleep. The only reason this lampshade gathered less dust than the other one was that we had to keep putting new bulbs in this one. Because of a wiring problem or whatever, this one always starts smelling sharply of metal. Considering what a strong odor of metal this one gives off when in use, I guess we were lucky never to have an accident. The only reason this lampshade gathered less dust than the other one was that we had to keep putting new bulbs in this one. She adored all things of nature. I remember her long walks out in the woods. Curiously, we never brought many plants inside the cabin. We were surrounded by so many outside, I guess we were saturated by them. At least I was. Maybe I should have let her bring some plants inside. She liked them a lot. A plant is a plant, beautiful to some, boring to others. They say these things are alive. If they are, it must be a horrible existence, confined in their own silent, dark world. We have much more interesting things than this plant inside. A plant is a plant, beautiful to some, boring to others. She is fairly religious, not me. I'm the cold and cynical bastard, but I don't remember that ever being an issue between us. She always thought our relationship was a blessing. God, how I miss her. <laughs> no longer the cynical asshole, I guess. Her faith came as a surprise to me. She was never prudish about sex, so I just didn't expect it. I guess people simply aren't that predictable. No. I don't want to read right now, especially not a Bible. I have no need for the words in there. I don't feel like being admonished by a deity right now. No, I don't want to read right now, especially not a Bible. It's a beautiful day, though there's an unnatural calm surrounding the area. I've always loved the hazy afternoon shades of this place. It's deep into summer, so there's a few hours left until it gets dark. The sunlight is so bright here. In other circumstances, this would have been the perfect afternoon for us. There's a crack in this window from a tantrum she threw some time ago. It wasn't the only thing she threw. Not exactly perfect soundproofing. The sunlight can be confusing, oppressive, as if pregnant with some ill omen. Or is the stress finally catching up with me? The sunlight is so bright here. In other circumstances, this would have been the perfect afternoon for us. These keys are for the cabin and the car. If the keys are here, does she have her spare? I should probably stay here in case she doesn't. Did she even have her own spare? We also have a key for the outhouse, but can't be bothered to keep it anywhere other than under that rock next to the thing. No one comes here anyway. We did have a night prowler once who left a mark inside the outhouse, but we rarely lock it anyway. I never noticed it before, but there's some rust on the ring. Huh, should get a new one. We also have a key for the outhouse, but can't be bothered to keep it anywhere other than under that rock next to the thing. No one comes here anyway. They prevent my blood pressure from skyrocketing. Doctor's orders. And Serena's. I'm generally not fond of taking medication. I find it hard to believe ingesting a few chemicals will do me much good in the long run. Don't forget your pill, hun. I know you'd rather not, but you know it's for the best. Beta blockers. I have high blood pressure. I'm only supposed to take these before meals. 
Not a big fan of them. They do tend to alleviate my headaches, though. Beta blockers. I have high blood pressure. Hers. I used it, too, when shaving. There's only an outhouse, and for some reason, whoever erected the rickety thing didn't think to include wall-to-wall -wall mirrors. So, <laughs> this came in handy. <laughs> Should I dust for fingerprints? I might if I were in a detective story. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. The last thing I need now is to see myself in the mirror. I must look awful. There's dust on this, too. It's everywhere. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. There's a strand of blonde hair in the comb. Yes, blonde hair like sun rays. I'm remembering. What's wrong with my memory? Did I have a stroke? She also had a brush, but I can't see it anywhere. Nor some of her other personal items. It's just a regular comb bought from a supermarket, new enough to still have all its teeth. Dearest, how do I say any of this? I like your way with words, but if I don't write this, I don't know what I'll do. My life feels so unreal now, dreamlike, but wonderfully so. Let me try, even if clumsily. The hours I spent with you when we last met are precious to me. I was so lost such a short time ago. Everything seemed drained of color and feeling. I think we were meant to find each other, to bring meaning to our lives again, make sense of the confusion shrouding both of us. When we stepped into the crystal silence of the snowy woods, away from the chatter of the guests, all nature seemed expectant, as if holding its breath, witnessing a rare moment of something infinitely better than what life in the ordinary run of things has to offer. Do you remember how the light crust of the snow glittered in the reflected light of the country house? How the copse of trees in which we walked was haloed with a magical aura? I felt the chill of the night air, and you opened your coat and enfolded me in your arms, and we hugged tight, sharing the warmth, sharing the only thing any of us have to share on this earth when you think about it. And then you toppled us on the snow, you devil. We laughed and rolled around, my head already spinning from the wine and crisp pure night air and the stillness all around. We lay back and I guessed when I realized what I was seeing. The luminous starscape, like a vast velvet cloth sprinkled with powdered sugar, like it can only be seen in the countryside. I had tears in my eyes when I turned to you and we kissed, and it felt like the only moment in all of time, or outside time, and ours was the only spark that could ignite the universe. You gave me these moments, you complete me in ways I never knew to dream of. Let me be the one who makes sense of the confusion whenever you feel lost again. We can make our own world against the rest of the world if need be. Together we can silence all the demons, heal all the wounds. I love you. In eternity yours, Serena. It's been so long since I said her name out loud. I think that's the moment I fell in love with her. When she told me... The soothing sound of her name. So glad to meet you. My name is Serena. clock is a trophy from our flea market adventures. Chalk this particular purchase up to, every cabin needs one. The ticking begins to feel homey after a while. The first night was a nightmare, though. Time never mattered much to us while we were hiding from the rest of the world here, as long as we were together and happy. The clock has always been rather autonomous. No matter how many times we've wound it up, it keeps going out of sync. Actually, I 
think it might have gone out of sync again. No trusting this clock. I wonder what time it is. As if it mattered. The clock has always been rather autonomous. No matter how many times we've wound it up, it keeps going out of sync. She was special. Contradictory. She didn't mind these. Actually, I think she was into them too. That looks interesting. We can always try it. I read it for the articles, of course. Oh, like that one by the guy. That one about the thing. I needed some incentive to go check the mailbox from time to time. It's some way through the woods. Something good left in this world. They still make covers like this. Neurotic. Not obscene. She's beautiful, but what's her obsession with dolphins? I needed some incentive to go check the mailbox from time to time. It's some way through the woods. Unlike its sibling, this lamp would last for months. We brought the lamps with us when we got this place all those years ago. They were from a garage sale. The sun is streaming through the window. No reason to turn this on. All these metaphors and similes in my head. Light of my life. Make light. Wait, that's another kind of light. A lamp is a lamp, but to a writer, Every mundane item triggers connections, and that leads to more. It seemed like neither of us could bother to properly wipe the lampshades. All these metaphors and similes in my head, light of my life, make light. Wait, that's another kind of light. Something draws me to this trunk. Is it the memories locked within, or something else? We use this trunk to store trinkets and papers, but I can't help thinking there's something of importance inside. It's too painful. I want to, but not yet. We found this trunk at a flea market. We used to love rummaging around those in our early years. Big enough for a lifetime of mementos. But we hated guns, so we never had any, even out here. But this would have been a good place to keep one, since it can be locked. We found big enough for a lifetime of mementos. But we hated guns, so we never had any, even out here. But this would have been a good place to keep one, since it can be locked. We found this trunk at a flea market. We used to love rummaging around those in our early years. Big enough for a lifetime of mementos. But we hated guns, so we never had any, even out here. But this would have been a good place to keep one, since it can be locked. It's based on an Irish folktale. Warrior poet O'Sheen goes to Tiernanog, a Celtic otherworld known as the Land of Youth and Promise. Niav is of the Fey folk. The fair ones. Fairies. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language and structure are a bit quaint. Still, some lines jump out at you. I've always been drawn to things that are kind of both good and bad at the same time. Maybe because that's so like life. My grandma introduced me to these old legends when I was just a kid, in between stories of what she could still remember of her childhood in the old country. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language and structure are a bit quaint. Still, some lines jump out at you. The dining table was well-worn even when we acquired the cabin. You could tell from its appearance that it had been the centerpiece of many happy occasions. And there were many more to come.
Dearest, how do I say it? And then you toppled us. She also had a brush, but I can't see it anywhere. The last thing I need now is to see myself in the mirror. I must look awful. Commune Evidence, Serena's favorite perfume. I've always told Serena that she doesn't need to wear perfume. Her presence is magical enough already. It smells so elegant. There's violet leaf and silk tree blossom, I think. This we were happy for a long time, at least I think we were. But as time passed, we fought about every little thing, even this. I keep looking at her things, remembering all the good and bad. Depends on how you look at it. Either a wonderful sensory stimulant, an aphrodisiac, or a subtle weapon in the mating rituals of Homo sapiens. We were happy for a long time, at least I think we were. But as time passed, we fought about every little thing, even this. I keep looking at her things, remember? Depends on how you look at it. Either a wonderful sensory stimulant, an aphrodisiac, or a subtle weapon in the mating rituals of Homo sapiens. I always resisted the temptation to sweep things under there when it was my turn to tidy up. The sunlight is so bright here. In other circumstances, this would have been the perfect afternoon for us. I can imagine her cuddling up to me even now, putting her hand under my shirt. Our dining table, quite modest, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This one wobbles. I always meant to do something about that, but somehow never got around to it. This used to be her favorite spot. She used to sit here, put her legs on the table, lean back, and just give me one of her smiles, those effervescent, incandescent smiles. Once, we dragged these chairs out to the lake and scrubbed off all the dust and grime of years. That was a long time ago. For all the charm of furniture like this, something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman, sort of brooding, one of a matching pair Obviously, there was a piece of gum stuck to the underside of this chair back when we bought this place. We just left it there. For all the charm of furniture like this, something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman, sort of brooding. This door has been creaking for years. One of the many things I promised I would fix. The rug's all crooked again. Can you help me straighten it out? I have no need for the words in there. They say these things are alive. If they are, it must be a horrible existence, confined in their own silent, dark world. I'm a casual dresser. No need to change clothes right now. The guy who snapped this, our host that night, used an actual film camera. It was a different world back then. My love, 
We don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. The guy who snapped this, our host that night, used an actual film camera. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. Without any activity, the corner feels cold and lifeless. I'd give anything to see her standing here again, making coffee or sandwiches. I made my own too, of course, but it just made me happy to see. I didn't cook much for her, always so worried about my stuff. When she was happy, she'd hum her favorite songs as she puttered around. I can't remember the last time. Damn, I can't even remember what her favorite meal was. Look, I said I would do it. Will you just sit down over there? I'll make you something we can both enjoy eating. I think it dates from the colonial era, probably brought over by the pilgrims. Feeling peckish, dear? The stove looks like something from World War I. Someone said, work and love are the only things that ever really happened to us. Was it Freud? Writing was so all-consuming for me, and I made so little headway in all this time. It all seems so meaningless now, drained of everything that made it worth reading in the first place. A lot of rarities and special editions here. I didn't lend out my Necronomicon, did I? No. Come sit with me. I want to talk. There's something I have to tell you. I have been trying, and believe me, I've been trying so hard. I almost have it. What was she trying to tell me? Of course, we made love here, too. There was no place in the cabin we didn't before things deteriorated. The most comfortable spot in the cabin, well, along with the bed, of course. When did we let this window get so gunked up? There didn't seem to be much reason to keep it clean. Just overgrown bushes outside, brambles and thistles. I should clean the cabin as a surprise, perhaps. No, better wait until she gets back. There was a time long ago that all this disrepair felt oddly homey. All those moments we sat at this table, laughing, smiling, or simply looking in each other's eyes. Will we have them again someday? This table has seen many happy times. The meals we shared, or when we just used to stay up late with a bottle of wine and talk. Oh, how we talked. I sure hope she comes back soon. We can sit down and discuss our problems, uh, like we always did. We could always work things out. I could tell plenty of stories about this table, to be honest. I kept saying I'd paint these chairs, add some color to this place. One more thing I never got around to. I feel like throwing this chair through the window. But that would just make me even angrier. Her favorite chair, huh? I should just smash this thing to pieces! It's wobbly and off balance, just like she was. Especially that night. All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. I torture myself trying to remember. I'm too upset to even think straight. She 
she's angry now. Part of me realizes I should be more shocked by this, but for some reason, I just feel numb, beyond it. She was lying to me and manipulating me all the time. Why did I let her do that? I'm the one who should have been scowling. She played me like a harp and made me look like a complete idiot. I hate her so much. All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. She'll forgive me and come back. But I've lost all of hope now. Do I deserve to be forgiven? What about all the things she did and all the things she said? Words and dreams may be enough for you, but you know what? You'll get a chance to test that soon because I've had enough. I torture myself trying to remember. I'm too upset to even think straight. Changeable man, insolent wretch. <laughs> Sounds like Serena, all right. Her father's realm. She was a daughter of the Celtic sea god Mananon. Oh, what was it? Machler? Scholars say Niav's divine father, Mananon, was of an elder race even more ancient than the Tuahaja Danan. I hate her so much. All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. It's just a bunch of schmaltzy junk. A shrine to naivety. I don't see anything else of value. I should just destroy this useless junk, but not even the venom inside me gives me strength. Why torture myself trying to remember? Her jewelry box. What is it doing here? Sit down, we need to talk. When did it go so wrong? This was supposed to be a... We weren't supposed to fight here. You just don't get it, do you? You never do. I'm too upset to even think straight. I remember how happy these made her. She smiled, that wonderful smile. I must have gifted these to make amends or something. Or did I? Did I ever gift her anything? She loved her trinkets more than she loved me, right? I hate her so much. Her wedding ring or mine? But what is it doing here? Oh, please, no. It's hers. I can't believe she would just leave it here. Where the hell is she? No. It can't be true. Now, all of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. Why torture myself trying to remember? The stains on this bed suddenly make me mad, angry even. Why must life always end up so sordid and hateful? I'm not crawling in there. I'm too riled up for that, and it's, it's just not dark enough anyway. I'm too upset to even think straight. All the real color faded from it long ago. It must be full of dust mites. I should burn it. I told her the rug was fine work, like I know anything about handicrafts. 
But it's what the Empress wanted to hear, wasn't it? I hate her so much. I should tear all her filthy, disease-ridden clothes apart and burn them! Everything she wore, just to lure me in. Not even these violent impulses give me the strength I need to open the armoire! What is wrong with me? All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. How could I be so inconsiderate? Did this stupid lamp destroy my marriage? I... I, I, I will fix it, in case she comes back. I haven't got any bulbs on me, and I didn't bring any tools. It... Wait, what am I thinking? Why am I worrying about a stupid lamp? Why torture myself trying to remember? <laughs> stupid, feeble-minded woman with her silly, menial things. It was she who didn't deserve me. I wouldn't waste my intellect on this... this sublunary distraction. She probably cared more for this plant than she cared for me. I'm too upset to even think straight. It's just a book. What good will reading a fairy tale do me? God has never been there for me when I needed comfort. Why would he want to go out of his mysterious ways to help me now? I hate her so much. song. Nothing feels worse when there's no hope. No chance of anything. The light is so dim here. Makes me want to chop down every tree outside. There's only a limited window of opportunity for everything. And I wasted mine. All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. Where are you going? Oh, that's rich. Just run away. I just needed to blow off steam to be somewhere else, just for a while. But I, I can't even remember what we argued about. Unless she was the one who left. I torture myself trying to remember. How could I have been so blind? Her vanity, always fixing her hair before bed, doting on her hair like a child. But I'm, I'm being unfair. Would I have wanted her to be some frump? Ugh, I'm too angry to even care. All she cared about was herself all along, her needs, her feelings. That's all that ever mattered to her. But what about mine? I'm too upset to even think straight. I can't even bear to look at my face. She's really done a number on me. She never descended to criticizing my looks, though. Even when we fought, even when my hairline started going. But it was a sore point for me. My thoughts are all over the place. Get it together, damn it. I hate her so much. I tried to flush these a long time ago, but someone noticed, as if she cared about my impotent life. High blood pressure? What a load of bull. I've never felt better in my life. I'm sick and tired of having to pamper you like a baby. Fine. I hope you have a great, lonely time at the hospital. All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. Dearest, how do I say any of this? I like your way with work, and then you toppled us on the snow.
That incessant noise. I should smash this useless antique to pieces right now. It can't keep the time for five minutes straight. Chimes completely at random and never stops making that infernal noise. But hey, guess who thought it was so cute? This thing has caused me more sleepless nights than I care to remember. No wonder I'm going crazy. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. I couldn't care less about the damn thing now. Maybe I should have a look at the contact pages. Her and her damn spice. Wow. Serena thought she was so special. Always trying to make our sex life edgy and exciting. Now I can see she was just afraid of admitting how bland and boring she really was. I torture myself trying to remember. I'm too upset to even think s I hate her so much. All of this... these... pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. I tried to be charitable with her, but what did it get me? Honestly, she could rarely carry a tune, so her humming habit got on my nerves. My wife has no indulgence given except what comes to her from heaven. We eat little, we drink less. This earth breeds not our happiness. William Blake. Never those dry, blackened omelets again. Good riddance. Why torture myself trying to remember? I want to hurl the whole damn lot into the lake. Or just tear at the pages until the wind sweeps them away. Some of these started a mildew long ago. Nothing gold can stay. Frost. All oh, those words, those damn words. My whole life's been consumed by them. Now I have none left to say. I'm too upset to even think straight. This armchair. This is where we had that talk. That damn... I've been trying so hard, but we lost something along the way. Did you get my letter? Will you just listen to me for once? God, you're always... Wait, where are you going? Don't walk away from me. I hate her so much. It's like looking into my own soul right now. Did I see shadows move? No. Just my imagination. It's like the whole world is against me. Even my mind is playing tricks on me. All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. I couldn't care less about this damn thing. Why torture myself trying to remember? I'm too upset to even think straight. I hate her so much. I sit here on the train, taking me to my final farewell to the ones who brought me to this world. I see the smiling couples on their way to new adventures and think, that used to be us. We had joy and laughter and friends once, but a memory is not the thing itself. You're very good at letting things you don't want to face slip off you. You continue as if nothing has changed, lost in your own lifeless world. Words and dreams may be enough for you. You know what? You'll get a chance to test that soon. I question how I once saw things. How much of what I thought we had were my own feelings, and how much of your manipulation? Because you are so very good with words, aren't you? You knew how to use them when we met, and for the longest time, I went along with the romantic whirl you conjured up around our shabby, isolated existence. Oh, it took me long enough to see it for what it was. And there were these moments that you swept me off on foolish flights of fancy, when I threw myself into your fantasies. You wove your spell, plying me with your magic and with wine in equal measure, and I was taken in like the lost little girl I was. Do you realize all the pain you've caused me? 
They say if you have to ask whether someone loves you, you already know the answer. Protestations to the contrary can no more convince me any more than I can make my own mother or father draw breath again. Your aloofness tells a different story. I no longer know what you're thinking. With my parents gone and with your refusal to even accompany me in my time of need, something broke. Or maybe it happened long ago, but I never saw it so clearly before, even after everything. I don't make you feel comfortable? Really? That's all you have to say? I won't waste any more life waiting for things that'll never come. Of course, that's what you expect me to do. Play the good wife so no one will laugh at you for being the failure you are to shield you from the truth of your existence. Lost in your books and vapid verse, blithely drifting into the mists of time, as if not even a footnote when you could be raking at it if you'd only used your words for anything other than personal indulgence. You talked and talked about your path, the winter blueness of my eyes, all that nonsense. And the years rolled by, the seasons came and went, on and on, you pursuing your dreams that will never be. Lost in your damned words, looking for clues you'll never find. I'm sure you're doing it even now with your rotting books. You took the best years of my life and gave only empty words in return. We've gone as far as we can, and something's got to give. Us. You're very good at letting things you don't want to acknowledge slip off you. You continue as if nothing changed. All of this, these pathetic souvenirs from our relationship, they're all lies. <laughs> I couldn't care less about this damn thing. Why torture myself trying to remember? I'm too upset to even think straight. I hate her so much. All of this... these... Pathetic souvenirs from our relationship. They're all lies. You realize how stupid this was. My God. I took measures. What is this? It can't. It isn't. How did it happen? I can't remember. It's already rotten beyond recognition. But how much time has passed? It's dry and withered. A body takes at least weeks to... How, how long has it been? I can't even remember how I did it. Maybe I didn't. Do I have brain damage? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Do you realize how stupid this was? We had a plan. I took measures to ensure nothing like this would happen. But no, you couldn't help your damn self. We can't risk moving it now. The bulldozers are coming any minute. Fire will do it. Do you think they will buy it after all this time? It's been months since you... Don't worry. It's all covered. He spent much time here. Fine. Give me the kerosene. Forgot your fuck. It was so stupid to leave it. Why did you do that? Can you calm down? I couldn't bear to wear it any longer. It's in a safe place. We'll pick it from the ashes. No, not like this. Please. No.
Poor whatever his name is. Seemed like his relationship just needed a little spark. But I guess his wife decided to take it a few steps further and just set the whole thing ablaze. <laughs> uh, I bet that ending really burned him up in the end. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my name is Staten. Hope you all enjoyed it. Like, share, and subscribe. And you all have yourselves a wonderful day.